Our next honoree is Her Royal Grace Olori Ia Orite Olasowo Adefumi. King Khan Mashe Olori Orite. For Her Royal Grace Ia Orite Olasowo Adefumi. Are queens born or made? Is there a royal jelly, a thick, creamy secretion to feed to a girl, like that fed by the hive in copious amounts to one larval honeybee, to modify its genome, to groom a queen? What made Sheila Brown from Pleasantville, New Jersey special? Who opened the road? Who sniffed out the shortest route? Who cleared away the obstructions that stood in the way to Eku Odun Oyotunji and the great Orisha Bodu spiritual lineage she helped to build? Did this all unfold through the exertions of human will? Nay, not fickle human will, but divine. This queen was born, not made. Her portion conferred by great Olodumare to lead his dear children along. She is clothed with neatness, she is fed with temperance, humility and meekness are as a crown of glory encircling her head. Her royal grace Ia Orite Olasowo Adefumi was the senior wife to his royal highness, the late Oba Osejiman Adefumi I, the first, and the primary initiate of a line of New World African kings at Oyotunji African Village. Located in the low country of South Carolina, 60 miles south of Charleston and 55 miles north of Savannah, Georgia, off of Interstate 95, Oyotunji is a power center for Yorubas in the Western Hemisphere, and Ia Orite is the queen mother of them all. Accordingly, her name is her title, which means Mother Heads the Throne. Born in Atlantic City, New Jersey, as Sheila B. Brown, her grace's journey began with, uh, with a childhood that epitomized the strength of African women and family, having been raised by her great-grandmother, her grandmother, and her grandfather. She attended Atlantic City High School and was very active in the church. At age 16, she became a debutante and under the tutelage of the Reverend Canon Kenneth E. MacDonald from Kingston, Jamaica, Rector of St. Augustine's Episcopal Church, Her Grace won an oratory scholarship to St. August, Augustine Episcopal College. At 17, she became the head of the Atlantic City Convocation for all Episcopal young churchmen. Had fate given her a different path after her 1962 graduation, Her Grace would have sought to be the first female bishop in the Episcopal Church. Having a flair for the dramatic, in 1968, Ia Orite embarked on studies with the Negro Ensemble Company in New York. This placed her in the company of fellow actors Robert Hooks, Douglas Turner Ward, and sister actress Rosalind Cash, all of whom would go on to achieve their own level of fame. Subsequently, as an assistant at Random House, Her Grace worked during uh, uh, during, that ten during the tenure of then owner and publisher Bennett Cerf. This afforded her the opportunity to interact with some of the giants in the literary world, Truman Capote and Laurent de Brunoff, to name a few. The totality of these experiences fortified her strength and prepared her grace for the distinct honor that was about to be bestowed on her. The most prominent known female figure of royalty in the United States 
became the Iyawo Oba, the king's newest wife, in 1974, joining three other queens in the Aafin at Oyotunji. Her grace's move south to Oyotunji led her ascendancy to principal queen, led to her ascendancy to principal queen to the Oba in 1990. And her name, Ola Sowo, means honor brings wealth and money. Oyotunji Village, created in Beaufort County, South Carolina in 1972 by her late husband, His Royal Highness Oba Adefumi, became the living monument to the Oba's goal of reclaiming his African heritage and showing other African Americans how to do so as well. Priestly initiation and kingship were some of the several first credited to the Oyatunji lineage, which was recognized by no less than the Oni of Ife, His Royal Majesty Akunade Adele Sijuade Olubuse II, one of the foremost traditional rulers in Nigeria and the spiritual leader of the Yoruba people throughout the world. The Kingdom of Oyotunji became the first Orisha worshippers in the West to reinstitute Igungun, uh, excuse me, Egungun Masquerade and the Ogmoni Secret Society. Her Royal Grace filled various roles in her 24 years as a co-builder and sustainer of the Kingdom of Oyotunji. In addition to rising to senior queen, she was the keeper of the archives, the crowns, and all royal emblems. As chief of royal protocols, she coordinated all manners dealing with the Oba, and as senior Ifa priestess and Ian Ifa, she coordinated the kingdom's annual Ifa festival. Having completed all of her rites of passage as king's wife, mother, chief, and grandmother, Ia Orite came to Miami in 1997 to write the first volume of the Her Story of the building of Oyatunji, the first 25 years. After the death of her husband in 2005, her royal grace permanently relocated with her family to Miami to begin a new cycle of community building, extending her late husband's work and starting fresh new initiatives of her own. Good evening. Hola, como esta? Sapase? Shalom. <laughs> and um, a hotel saying? Yeah. 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 <laughs> and um, for my Native American ancestors, they say, Ona, may a road be light. I want to say good evening to everyone. Much love to all my sisters here. I have had opportunity to either work with or meet or become very good friends with all of the ladies here over the years. And I'm very pleased to be here. Um, I find that the young people in our community today are totally unprepared for job interviews, how to fill out applications, how to present themselves um, on a daily basis to someone to whom they hope will employ them. And I find that the um, approach that the employers use for our young people and the uh, manner of um, interviewing is quite different. I found uh, that there were people um, who were more apt to hire one person or another just by the very first meeting, the very first impression. And my great-grandmother would always tell my sister and I, the first impression is the most important impression that you can give someone. And I found that to be very true. And so during the process of working with young people, uh, they would come in jeans, they would come in shorts, they would come in tank tops. The young men's pants would be sagging below their um, behinds. Um, they would have on um, gym shoes. Uh, the hair would not be properly done. And I t had to take on the position of really being the mother and the mentor in the office. 